Hey everyone and welcome back to today's video. If you're here, it's because guess what? There's a hundred days, not even a hundred now, you know, less than a hundred days till the first GCSE exams begin. Which means it's just gonna fly by and before you know it, you've finished your GCSE exams. And so this is the three month countdown video where I tell you the top 10 things that you should start doing or should already have been doing to prepare yourself for that point. Remember that, and this is gonna be the mum and me talking, but remember that your friends may not be saying that they're doing these things, but trust me, when they get their results on results day and it's a lot higher than yours and you're questioning, how? It's probably because they were studying and revising at home when you thought they were just chilling. Let's be completely honest, because that's what we all did. We all said, ah, we didn't do anything at home. Oh, we didn't do any studying. And then guess what? We popped out with an eight and a nine. So to start off with, the number one tip is to start revising now. Now, like, I don't even know how to say this in a more clearer, in a more understandable way, but there has to be some sort of revision structure or just something that has started to happen at this point. That's not hardcore revision, that's not revision timetable, that's not, you know, studying eight hours a day. I'm saying some sort of revision, some sort of going back over your information from year nine, from year 10, from whatever, from the earlier modules that you've done has to have begun happening at some point around this point. And I think the February half term coming up next week is a really good starting point for that. The second thing that I would recommend doing is to start using exam papers if you're not already and using the mark schemes. So exam paper, mark scheme, hand in hand, use them together all the time and start using them as early as possible. A lot of the times like you always wait, you wait until you finish studying all the content before you start using exam papers. You don't have to do that. There's websites where you can find exam papers only for a specific sub like topic area. So if you're, if you're looking at math, you can find exam papers uh, or exam questions only for like factorizing or only for vectors for example so you don't have to do a whole paper but I would still recommend doing a whole paper even if you haven't covered all the content because it gets you practicing what could come up and that topic might not even come up so you might actually be able to do the whole paper anyway but the key thing at this point is if if you take anything from this video just one thing and you go it would be to start using past papers and looking at the mark scheme and studying what is required of you like the, how should you word that science answer how should you word that like how do you lay out that maths you know question that is what you should be doing at this point my third tip is to use a retrospective revision timetable and this is spoken about before on youtube and i'll leave a uh, two good videos actually that i've watched about this down below so i don't have to go through it all over again but it's essentially where rather than having a timetable where you're like okay i'm going to do biology i'm going to do maths i'm going to do a bit of chemistry and you just kind of like have the subjects there rather you're actually dictating exactly what your like all your modules are, are are laid out for you so you say how you feel about it like how confident you are about it and then once it's read like you you know it's red so then you don't have to go over it again and then you, you have, let's say the next topic is amber then that's something that you might want to come back to next time you're doing a revision session and so on and so forth so it's a nice way of having a timetable where it's dictated rather than just like i have to do biology so i'm going to do biology rather it's dictated by these are my weak subjects and these are my okay subjects and so i'm going to choose the one that is required of me now based on what i actually need to learn Okay, the fourth thing that I recommend at this point is to start revising or like start teaching a friend. Um, and this is actually a technique called the Feynman. I don't know how you pronounce it, but the Feynman, Feynman technique. Um, and it's essentially the technique where you teach someone else information that you know in order to like solidify it into your memory. So for example, if I don't understand, I'm going back to maths again, if you don't understand how to factorize, then learn how to like just quickly look at a textbook look at the steps of how to factorize and then try to explain that to somebody else and it may seem like but i don't even understand it myself but actually when you explain it to someone else you're kind of having to justify every step to yourself and so you realize oh that's why I, that makes sense yeah that makes sense why i did that and also it becomes a conversation so you and that other person get into a dialogue about why you're doing this step and then guess what when you're in that exam and that question comes up you're like oh yeah i talked to my friend and this is how i did it and it i'm not even joking 
that is how I got through my exams. Like I taught it to people, anyone who would listen, I would teach them things. Um, and when I went to the exam and I saw a similar question, I know it because I've done it before. Like I've done it and I remember saying it out loud as well. The fifth thing is, and this is something that you, like I don't hear mentioned a lot with GCSE, but it's, you have to be a bit smart with this, is to use the 80-20 rule. It's essentially saying that 80% of your output is a result of 20% of your input. So for example, in maths, you learn all these topics like factorizing and you learn fractions and vectors and shapes and all of these things. Um, and then you actually come to the exam and then nothing comes up. And you know what, it happens and that's fine. However, you can be smart and a lot of this comes down to how much past papers and how many past paper questions that you do. Because you will notice that a similar, like similar topics come up every single time. So like in every single exam, there will be a question that asks you to expand brackets. So like you need to know that. That is a non-negotiable. Whereas there might be a paper where vectors will come up and then maybe it doesn't come up, right? So if you are going through past paper questions, just try to notice topics that are coming up every single time and get those like, get, get really confident with those ones. Number six, try to find resources that allow you to do quick active recall. So that means that you wanna find resources that allow you to do like 10 minutes of work or five minutes of work rather than like only resources that are like deep work. So an hour or two hours, like an exam paper, for example. Because right now, like you might have an hour to do of work, but you may not have an hour. So then you think, oh, I don't have them. I've only got 10 minutes, like it's not enough time. Whereas 10 minutes is enough to do a quick, um, five a day sheets from Math Genie, for example, where it randomizes five questions from five different topics from your from your um, syllabus or from your exam papers. And then you can quickly do those five questions in five minutes and that's a quick bit of revision. So even if you do nothing else, you've done that at least, right? So that's a really nice way of making sure that you're getting active recall into your study sessions and into your days at a relatively early point. Like, you know, you've got three months left, it's still early enough, but, but late enough to be a bit urgent, but still early enough to be able to do a few things on the side um, and have a bit more time to like relax than let's say next month or let's say April. And also I'll be leaving links down below for a few resources that you can use for some subjects as well. The seventh thing that I'd recommend, and this is one of the reasons, and this is what I, I noticed from students that always get the top grades and um, what I used to do as well, is starting to go to school a little bit early from this point. So, you know, normally you get to school and you go straight into, you know, into form class or whatever. But now you want to think a bit more about like trying to be there a little bit early and getting that exam mindset. OK, because it takes time to get into that mindset. So let's say you were um, in it's exam day, what would you do? You'd get there half an hour before, you'd get an hour before. But if you're not used to that, it, it might be a bit difficult to adjust. So remember, we're getting used to this point, so nothing's difficult for you. Everything's, you know, will be simple for you when, it, when you come down to having those exams. So start to get to school, like maybe half an hour early, maybe 45 minutes early, go to the library, they're usually open, and then just do like maybe an active recall, maybe a five a day sheet, maybe like read through the notes or a textbook that you're reading in whatever subject it is, maybe just read a book, maybe just whatever it is, do some homework, anything that you need to do um, in your, like just by yourself, uh, not with your friends, not like outside, but just indoors, spend half an hour, literally just half an hour. Imagine half an hour, five days a week, you know how long that is? Two, that's two and a half hours. And that's a whole morning, essentially, of extra time that you've gained just by doing half an hour a day, like in the morning. It's amazing how much time you can save and how much more work you can get done using your time a bit more wisely. Okay, my last but definitely not least tip is to start thinking about exam technique. And by that, I mean things like, um, what do you do when you're actually in the exam hall and when you actually have the paper for whatever subject it is in front of you, right? Um, a lot of people like don't talk about the fact that exam, the grade you get, isn't just about knowing the information, but also how you answer questions, the way that you answer questions, the things that you do um, in the exam, the way that you are, the way that you sit, the way that you like hold your pen, the stationery that you have, like all of those things make such a difference and add up to those little points that you lose. So for example, um, a technique, like some techniques might be things like checking over your work. So whenever you finish a, a question, even if it's not an exam question that you're doing, even if it's in your textbook or you know, your teachers asked you, 
double check your work, get into the habit of you finish the work, go back. So you're never, you're never in a situation where you finish the work and you close the book. You should always be finish the work, go back and check. Um, redoing some questions. So one thing that I used to like to do, and this would save me so many marks, is if I finish a question, I would redo the first bit of the question, like the mental bit in the beginning. So like if there was like an addition or like some sort of mental maths question, I'd redo that bit only um, just to make sure that that was the right track. Okay, so the rest should be okay. Um, looking at your numbers or looking at your answers and saying, does it make sense? Does it make sense for this number to be that big or that small? Does it make sense for this answer to be that long or that short? Um, things like uh, your handwriting being clear. If the examiner can't read your writing and you've written a, an answer for English literature and they can't read what you're saying, they're really going to struggle. Like they're really going to struggle. So just trying to practice writing quickly, but also writing legibly as well. These are all techniques that are going to make such a difference for your grade um, and help you like with revising from now, but also like at the end as well. But yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. It is a three month countdown of a few things that you should be thinking about, a few things that you should be doing or not doing um, before your exam season really ramps up because once you get back from your half term, it's gonna be go, go, go. It's the last term before, um, the last like little half term bit before you then go off to you know revision and, and exams and, and hardcore um, studying. So it's really important that you use this time in your half term to rest, but also try to build some good habits that you can push on and, and continue on um, when you go back in after your half term. So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.